Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. I'm very excited today because we have Dave Ferguson on the show today, and he is a martial arts life coach, and he has a wonderful story to tell, and he has some great teachings to share with us on this show. Now, before we begin, don't forget, follow and subscribe to our channel so you can get all the new episodes and you can listen to all our past episodes Dave, it is an honor to have you on the show, and I'm very excited because I feel that uh, martial arts has so many benefits. But before we go into that, I'd love to know, you know, how you really, you know, a little about yourself and how you got into this journey. Stacey, great to be here. Um, it's always very exciting when um, outside of the country as well. Um, it's always get to that stage where you know you've got a story to tell. You're never sure how much people are interested in it. And when you have the chance to share that, even across the water, it's um, it's a real honour. So thanks for having me. Um, so for myself and my particular journey, I mean, it's a difficult one to know where to start, really. But I think because of the method is such in, in Bob in the martial arts, I'll start there, really. So I started my first martial art, Korean martial art called Tang Soo Do about, well, dead on 40 years ago, nearly 41 coming up now. And um, I did that for a couple of years and I really enjoyed that. I, I sort of followed my brother who used to be into sort of the Bruce Lee movies and Bruce Lee was a real sort of global icon, obviously, that most people would have known of, hence being that global icon. Um, and as much as I kind of loved him as well, I kind of probably followed my brother more. And probably one of the earliest things that I wanted to do with martial arts was to be that skillful martial artist. But one of the first memories I had was of, of the teacher himself, and he was a pretty strict and serious sort of traditional martial artist. And I remember him saying at quite an early stage that if any of you youngsters in particular you know, use martial arts in the wrong way, you'd have to deal with me. And I thought he was joking, and he definitely wasn't. But... It stuck with me in so much from that first martial art, that importance of not using the art in a negative way. You know, you have a responsibility to yourself, to others, to your teacher, to your martial arts school, to that history of that art. And I never really got it as much at the beginning, but it stood with me and I recognize that. And I've done six martial arts over my career. And they all have aspects of that. Right. And within the martial arts, there's always a bit of a battle between which one's the best. Um, mm -hmm. But really, they're all brilliant in their own way. They all have some real some fundamental um, positivities. And that has helped me very much throughout my life, whether that's the stress at work, whether that's um, you know when you're struggling with your own moods, um, when you're a bit peed off, if I can say that, and you can get out, away, get out a bit of aggression out, they have been provided a consistency through the up and downs throughout all the other aspects of my career. Because alongside my martial arts, I've had a 25 year in this career in the civil service. I suppose that's another ginormous impact on, on, on my life. Um, and I always had, not always, but in a lot of them roles, I had a supportive, caring aspect, a chance to help people change. And, you know, uh, in a criminal justice context, you know, you'd be maybe coming from prison or serving a community type order. And I would be a, a parole officer in, in, in your parlance, but a probation officer over here and would help as part of a team to support that change because we all need a bit of support sometimes. Oh, so when I started the martial arts career, it was very much a lot of similarities really were there in the sense of that kind of assessment. People are in a certain place, maybe low in mood, maybe going through some sort of midlife crisis. And I, I was there in a kind of supportive assessment, helping role, helping middle-aged men to understand the changes, you know, that many of us often go through. Now, I've been a middle-aged man for 15 years, so I've used that 15 years of experience as well. So that, in a nutshell, is my kind of two dominant aspects of my career, really, for martial arts as my kind of love and initial passion now into 
um, a st strategic business form as well as the still getting the passion from it and that caring and support role for people who are in the need of a bit of support in the times of crisis where things get a bit much. Now, do you just focus on middle-aged men or do you um, do other age groups and audiences as well? Or is your focus just on middle-aged men? Exclusively middle-aged men. Okay. And now, I think for, for me, that was really important. One, because I was one and I'd been through so much changes during my middle age and most of them I didn't expect. Because when I was younger, I thought, I mean, when you were younger and someone to say they're 40, 50 or 60, it just seems the most ridiculous age you've ever heard of. And then as I got closer to my middle age, I thought, well, you know, everyone else will suffer with middle age type things, ball losing their hair, you know, a bit of a stomach, uh, regrettably illnesses, you know, risk of illnesses increasing, regrettably. Um, but I thought it never would happen to me. So that was my strategy. Surprise, surprise, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> so that is where I thought I've got to use that experience. And I felt the middle-aged men in postmodern society seem to be left out of the picture a little bit in many ways. Yeah. And the more I delved into the research, whether it was, you know, really at the, the high tragic end of suicide rates of this particular demographic, or whether it's just something a little bit more mundane with, you know, aches and pains and being stuck on the sofa for the last three years after COVID, you know, and being hardly able to move. The needs that this particular niche or niche, I think you guys would say group needed was absolutely vital. And I felt I had that real life experience that I wanted to uh, make sure I shared. I love it. Now, how can ambitious overachievers overcome health challenges and revitalize their vitality in the middle age group for men? I think um, for me, it's about a balance between recognizing some of the maturation process. You know, some things do change as we get older. I, you know, I, I've been balding for about eight years or something, just about got over it. And I tried lots of ridiculous things, which never worked. Be quite desperate like you do sometimes. Um, yeah. And that's potentially the bad news. The good news, however, there is so much things that you can do about the multiple everyday changes, which a lot of men give up on. So whether it becomes to improve your lung capacity, your heart health, whether it comes to getting to know your brain better and making it function better, whether it comes to improving your cardiovascular system, whether it comes to improving your mood during um, the, the seasons, there are absolutely things we could do about that. So my tagline is very much either to prevent, reverse, or at the very least, manage better. Right. Now, for someone who's, who is in their middle age and they're starting to go through a lot of different changes because men go through changes just like women, like what are some of the, where do they start? Because a lot of them probably feel like, you know, I don't know where to begin. You know, what would be some of the strategies yeah, well, I think there's a lot of there's, a, there's there's multiple reasons why that might be the case, and it could be things ranging from finance, for example. So one of our fundamental sort of values is we will always have a set of free resources on our main platforms, particularly the website, because for some people, you know, that could be a factor, um, mm -hmm. and we don't want to. Obviously, it's a business, and I have to make money. Um, to, to survive but equally there's always room for a lot of resources that are kind of action orientated you could take straight away um in many cases what's the latest one there's one around i don't know if, um your your your, your listeners will know about the circadian rhythm kind of 24 hour soliloquial sleep cycle um internal mechanism which we all kind of um all relates to everyone and during these autumn winter months because sunlight being one of the main uh App inputs, it can input, it can affect our mood metabolism. Yes. And a lot of people don't even know this and are not prepared for it. But surprise, surprise, no, when it gets to autumn, they start feeling a little bit lower and they don't feel quite good and they don't quite get it. So yeah. every year we provide a range of free resources, usually attached to seasonal affective disorder. There's a lot of sort of commonalities between the right. two. So our, our clients or 
non-clients, any middle-aged man could just head to the free, head to the website, go onto that latest blog. You don't even need to leave your name or your email address. It's just there. You can even just read it there. A six, seven minute read. Lots of, I think it's five helpful hints to improve um, that rhythm throughout the winter months. So we find that's really popular. I love that. And what are certain certain strategies offered in your enhanced vitality program to achieve physical health and rejuvenation? Yeah, so there's quite a wide range there. Um, and for clients, it's going to be different. So we have three fundamental pillars, strength, flexibility, and well-being. So that would sort of come under the flexibility and well-being aspect. So for some, they really want that strength and want to still be quite strong and maybe are usually more closer to a training method already. For those who want that vitality and improvement, that's when we start going into brain health. So we start, we do a basic summary analysis of where you stand with your brain. Most clients absolutely love that because yeah. people know aspects of their personality. Maybe I'm a funny guy at the party or I, um, I'm shy or, or whatever. And we have some idea of our own personality characteristics. You ask someone about their brain health and what parts of their brain work well and what don't, they have absolutely no idea and they don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, so what we see with that sort of um, that assessment, and then sometimes it can be linked to nutrition, not always. Usually, sometimes it can just be with outdoor exercises. Um, and when we talk about developmental plasticity, it's around often new, learning new techniques. Mm -hmm. And that really, we can't necessarily replace the white matter. Regrettably, that does drop around four or five percent a decade right. once you're over 40. That's the bad news. The good news, and this is about that, always that manage it better through developmental plasticity, we can actually build brand new neural connections in our 40s, yeah. 50s, 60s. Again, something we weren't too aware of around 20, 30 years ago, and the average fella has no idea about. So true. And now, what are some of the ways that, you know, that since you've been working with clients, some common things that can help boost brain health? Because, you know, that's a big issue. And, and many men, you know, worry about that because they see sometimes as they get older, they see the decline in their brain health. They see the decline in their cognitive thinking and their memory and things start to change. So what are what are some of the common things you could advise someone and you know before, you know not you know die because everybody is different but some common things that might be beneficial for an individual okay so i mean obviously i would always recommend if particularly if you're on medication um or you had any other issues or pre past strokes or anything like that always yeah. speak to your general practitioner which we call gp as a doctor over here first um what i find particularly if I could certainly speak personally, is for yeah. me, omega-3 is almost inevitably your kind of start. It's almost your basic nutrition. Now, it's one of the, the few um, ingredients you can't necessarily get that much that easily, naturally. You can, there are various ways. You can build that through nutrition. But most people are not that. And usually you find an uh, omega-3 top-up is really helpful. It's kind of like the kind of oil oils the brain up a little bit. So that's yeah. really helpful. Outdoor exercises, particularly first thing in the morning, and even though winters bring some bad effect, and then clear crystal days, some mm. particular breathing exercises, they're, they're also a free resource on the website that people could do, and that really can provide clarity. The gains and stuff are not particularly good in the apps. They do help a little bit, but they're not yeah. brilliant. But the traditional, now we're talking more problem solving, but the traditional crossword Sudoku's, they're brilliant as well. So if right. I had to say three things, I would probably say uh, the traditional puzzles, mm -hmm. outdoor breathing exercises first thing in the morning, and omega-3 supplement. What are some of the breathing exercises people can do? Because that's a very hot topic because, you know, breathing exercises are so powerful and they can do help you with so many things from sleep to stress to anxiety to being able to focus and clarity. So what are some of the um, breathing exercises that you recommend that you find very effective for middle-aged men? Yeah, so I would say keep it pretty simple particularly for those who haven't gone down this route. Um, 
and I sort of take it right to the beginning in so much as, you know, well, it depends on your belief, but uh, let's say from a Christian perspective, you know, you've had life breathing into you. And the average person, because of their stress, pressure, worried about the next thing, they just shorten and shorten and shorten that breath. And they get right. tighter and tighter and tighter. So for right. me, when I talk about the, the outside um, fresh air, I would start with quite simple, basic, slow internal external breath there are various breathing techniques um linked to the martial arts but that's quite a bit down the road i would say that's if you really sort of take to it but absolute basics are just simple slow breaths certainly in the morning and i would kind of stage them out throughout each major stage of the day so it could be before going into work it could be you know, before you go on a long journey, if you're the kind of um, guy that ends, I say guy, yeah, guy that ends up arguing with people on the streets. So yeah. then kind of the short periods between three and five deep breaths, and they are absolutely brilliant, and they work almost every time. Now, when it comes to martial arts, why is martial arts so effective and so powerful for middle-aged men? Because, you know, it, it has a lot of principles. It has a, a whole way where you just really change the way you're living, the way you, you view life, there's perspective on life, your gratitude, your, you know, it, it helps to boost your confidence level. You know, people start to really implement, you know, martial arts into children because it, it really changes the way they react and the way they feel and even the way they communicate better with other peers and even adults now for middle-aged men you know what are what are some of that benefits of including martial arts into your daily routine yeah i mean the benefits are plentiful um and martial arts have been around for at least 3,000 years. There's always a bit of debate in exactly when and exactly which was first. But the most robust ever was just probably from southern India around 3,000 years. Um, and they, uh, original martial arts were pretty, uh, had more Zaoism, Taoism um, type Buddhism. Uh, impact from early so there was always that aspect right from the beginning and mm -hmm. I, I'm a very much really big believer in don't reinvent the wheel so if these mm -hmm. arts have been around I mean the first kind of mixed martial arts was around six well not around it was 648 BC the Olympiad um, used by the Spartans and yeah. also Herod, Herodes to kill the Nemean lion say so it's good enough yeah. for him um, it's, it's good enough for anyone I would I would expect um, but if you look at the different originates of these arts they almost cover that physical bodily kind of confidence and strength and also that wider spiritual deeper understanding so they've right. been there for millennia and they kind of work without yeah. a shadow of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt but where i probably where i had a little bit of a problem personally and moving forward was the martial arts as they were, as great as they were, unless you've been training throughout your young age onto middle age, to start mm -hmm. a middle age was quite challenging and it didn't quite fit some of the um some of the difficulties that men may have, you know, maybe if they put on weight, lost a bit of confidence, not used to training. So that's very much where I sort of had to dig fairly deep because they weren't quite working for me quite in the same way in my right. late 40s. I was still enjoying them. They were fantastic. But they weren't sort of keeping up with the changes in my body, if you like. And this was also during right. the COVID period as well, so lacking a bit of social interaction as well. So they yeah. probably for the first time were slightly failing. Um, and that's when I first started to interact, integrate Sorry, some of my older sort of kung fu type five animal style martial arts which i yeah. loved before and some of the new kind of jujitsu arts that i'd started to do as well into some weird kind of mix i didn't really right. know what i was doing at the beginning but i was just experimenting seeing if i could get that same old feeling that change that re rejuvenate or revigoration and it didn't quite happen 
And then upon, upon further exploration, I looked more at the Asian countries, Thailand, Japan, Vietnam, uh, China, uh, Burma, mm. etc. And I noticed that in all them countries, the elderly uh, citizens of the, their population all were doing these martial arts routines, all daily routines, always outdoors, no weights whatsoever. And fundamentally, which was my eureka moment, they were completely different to how the 20s and 30-year-old martial artists train in them mm. same said countries. And I think that's the biggest mistake we make here. I wouldn't necessarily say to a middle-aged man not to do a martial art. That's what they want to do is absolutely fine. But to yeah. start one in their 40s is very difficult. So that's where I started to integrate different patterns, structures, and exercises that were more akin to the needs that I was experiencing when I was working with middle-aged men. You know, right. because when you're younger, you want to go and be the sort of champion of the world, and that's great. But some of the men that I work with, yeah. You know, without being horrible, they can't even get off the couch without you right. know, being in quite considerable pain or discomfort. So I knew then the exercises that I started to develop within my integrated method had to be more aligned to what their middle-aged men's needs and challenges are. Yes. And that's such a great point. Now, when it comes to after you've understood what their challenges were, once you started to incorporate it and you got them involved and these middle-aged men were starting to practice with you, what are some of the transformations that you witnessed like from the before and after, like common, you know, um, transformational, you know, um, things that really wowed you, you know, because I'm sure they come in with a certain mentality, a certain way they're taking care of themselves, a certain way they're viewing life. And then all of a sudden you're teaching them things that they had no clue about that were so amazing. And they actually entered it into their routine of living and they changed things, they altered things in their life. What was that transformation that you saw once they incorporated martial arts and the principles of martial arts and, you know, overall the entire practice? Yeah, I mean, that that really does bring a smile to my face because that is, it's, it's always at their moments where you realize that's it. That's why you're doing this. That That's yeah. it, you know. And I always find, I always feel slightly pompous, but I always know, you know, you usually see that glint in their eyes is kind of, yeah. is, is, is the killer one, really. And I'm just trying to think, lots of stuff rushing through my head to think which are the best examples to share, really. Um, I would start with uh, a guy called Rob, and he well, he actually was an old school martial artist, a Shotokan Karate. And it was, again, just past the sort of COVID period with things are getting back to sort of normal to some extent. And he sort of hadn't trained very much. And some similarities to me, doing a few bits at home, it just wasn't the same. Um, and he put on a bit of a beer belly and his mood was a bit low and he was working from home and felt a bit isolated. And he absolutely loved the program anyway. I think he loved the new martial arts, even though, again, he was quite biased when I said about his, lots of martial arts being mixed, including jujitsu. which said, oh, I don't know about that, I don't know about that. Um, but that was actually a really important, some of the aspects of them exercising, because it really strengthened his hip and back and kind of groin area, really very mm -hmm. common within, in a jujitsu kind of wrestling field. Yeah. And he, from where he was, prior to starting my rejuvenation program, within 14 weeks, he had run his first half marathon wow. for his favourite charity, collecting around 700 um, sterling, probably about just under a thousand maybe US dollars. And to see his, I don't know, his excitement, his confidence, his pride, not just achieving that, but then doing that on behalf of his favourite charity. I always remember that one. That was that was a pretty uh, good one. Another one, which maybe seemed quite simple, but it was someone who was really always tense, mildly aggressive, to say the least, um, always arguing with his partner, with his wife, always arguing with other people. And throughout that throughout the program, seeing his mood and aggression change. 
And yeah. the first time he recognised the first guy, he always argued with in the morning, not the same guy, but the, almost the first person that cut him up, how he second thought that and didn't get involved in that argument and how that impacted the rest of his entire day. Yeah. That was that was a really good one. Um, and I think the final one, which I probably wouldn't go, go I won't go into too much depth, but again, uh, more of a husband-wife situation where he reported how happy his wife was that he had got his humour back. Yeah. So there's nothing to do with the muscles or the strength or the kicks in the air. They almost seem to get, you know, it's, it's, it's often in real life things that often make the difference. And she yeah. said how he's got his humour back. And I won't go any further with the next stage, but how he got his mojo back, shall we call it, in I other agree. aspects of his life as well, which, you know, he again made him feel like a, um, a man again, if you like, for one of a simpler term. Yeah. Oh, I but love I it. I, want to... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. And, you know, it really seems like it could really, you know, improve your mindset. It can improve your overall health. It could improve your spirituality, you know, and that will affect your work life and your family life. So it really can do an overall haul on your entire life by just adding, you know, the martial arts into your life and, and going by its principles and really following through and making it, you know, a daily routine could actually, it could do, it could be a, a, a game changer for your entire life. Yeah, well, I certainly believe so, because and one of the examples I, I, I love sharing as well, and I love that I experienced it, because near the end of my civil service career, which I think I mentioned earlier, I'd pretty much had enough, you know, and I yeah. lost my way a little bit, and then dreams that I wanted to sort of achieve looked like it wasn't going to happen, and, yeah. you know, it was, it was quite a challenge, really, and I had issues with sort of management and, you know, work, and work relationships, and was really struggling. And I thought if I, when I did leave the civil service, I would have to leave under a cloud or some big argument with someone or walk out the, walking out the door because you just can't take it. But during exactly the same period that I developed and um, started my method, obviously I'm, I'm, test, I'm the ultimate guinea pig. You know, I'm testing, I'm testing myself. I started to test on a few colleagues as well within the same civil service role, usually middle to senior managers under a huge range of stress, some genuine, some they put on themselves. Um, so I was partly tested at the same time. But what I really loved about that was by the time I'd left the role, I didn't leave under a cloud. I left in a calm, very successful um, stage. Everyone had noticed all the changes. I had completely turned around. I was probably working 30% less and producing far better quality of work. Yes. You know, wow. and for me, that, that meant so much, not only to prove what was working, but also to leave there in a good way. I still, I'm still in touch with people, still got people who work on my program, my old civil service colleagues, you know, and that was a wonderful achievement because like I said, we can feel stress and pressure. And I'm not saying some of it's true, but some of it's yeah. self-indulged. It's just a negative spiral. And I think I at least proved personally, and I have, and people do notice, no doubt about that, I yeah. proved personally that I could do far better work, working far less. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I, you know, what you've explained is just so powerful. I think people really, I, I love the martial arts. I think it has such a positive effect in people's lives. And uh, I really highly suggest that people look into it because it's it's great. It's great for middle-aged men. It's great for younger children. It's great for women. But I like how you're actually focusing on middle-aged men because that's a very tough time. You know, me being a middle-aged woman and being married and seeing my friends who are males, you know, it's a hard time when they get into to that middle age area you know they're really they're happy. starting to develop you know they're seeing changes in themselves you know and they're not liking a lot of the changes and you know they're trying to figure out how to how to deal with it on an emotional level on a in a in a, in a you know, their mentality you know their physical you know strength and you know not being able to do what they did when they were younger but they still want to keep that physique going they want to you know you know the health wise other things make their way in that's very common for middle-aged men 
in, but they don't know how to handle it. So it's really important to have a, a solid structure in your life that could help assist, you know, and help give you the mentality, the strength, improve, you know, your health, you know, and, and assist you in these hard times, which is, you know, it's when, when the men start changing, you know, just like women, you know, you go through a very hard process and people aren't, you know, um, you know, it's not talked about enough. People are aware, but it's not talked about enough. And, and I like how you're, you're incorporating martial arts and you're incorporating the principles, the tactics, the, the, the way of living that it, it really, um, you know, encourages and how you can put all that into your life and really see positive results. Now, from, from the conversation we had today, what would be some of the important factors that you really would like to emphasize? Sorry, I'll be saying that again, Tracy. So the, things, so the things we've talked about today, what would be some of the important things that you feel you'd like to really make the listeners understand when, you know, from our conversation that you and I had today? Absolutely. Yeah. I think for me, the thing for me is there is a way to manage, prevent, or reserve, reverse what you're going through. It's just probably, like I said earlier on, it's that lack of preparation. It's that lack of awareness of what some of them changes are and what you can do about it. But there is, we live in the age of information and there is that information and knowledge out there that can help you rejuvenate your life during the middle stage in preparation for that next stage of your life. Oh, definitely. And, and I also highly suggest too, is when you're going through that middle change of your life is to, to get some blood work done, maybe by a functional medicine doctor, you know, because your levels change too, as we go through those changes. And, you know, they could point out because they're very, they're very big, just like you are with preventing it and looking at the changes and seeing what needs to be fixed before it even becomes a problem and how to reverse yes. it. So, you know, sometimes you could see that stuff in blood work, you know, and, and functional medicine doctors look at things differently than a primary doctor. They, they're looking at different levels and they're, they're looking at different, different aspects of your body and they're pointing out things that should be, you know, more stabilized or should be higher or should be lower. And I think that's important too, is that, you know, no. when you feel those changes, you know, also, you know, you can use martial arts as a way, but also maybe consider getting some blood work done and, and figuring out what's going on health wise in your body, especially if you're having health issues or you, you feel a little bit different before it becomes an issue, you know, try to stop on it as quick as possible. So it doesn't become an issue. No, you're absolutely right. And I think prevention is often the key there. Um, and there is pretty robust evidence that most men and some of its social class as well but most men can be a little bit slow on the uptake until it's too late um right. like i said myself i just never thought it's going to happen so i just completely ignored it and when it did things did change um you know slightly mundane issue but bald in head i completely wasn't prepared for it and completely melted yeah. um so <laughs> usually our assessments are quite deep and we ask all sorts of questions that sometimes we think hold on a minute that's a bit much but it is really to get that holistic pattern and we often recommend a range of tests whether that's through the gp or private if you can afford it including blood tests general health tests um range of the prostate check all sorts of things just to try and give that um just to set that reset as clean as possible, really. So I certainly would agree with the blood tests as, as as well. I have things like that fairly regular around once a year. Right. And that's I great. I think that's a really good way to just, uh, just a yearly review. Coming to the end of the year now, I usually do most of my tests like that. So, um, you know, again, without going too personal, men, you know, your privates, again, just during this particular time absolutely risk increase you know whether you're having a shower or whatever i mean you know a lot of guys play around that area anyway so while you're there <laughs> please 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 check and if any issues and absolutely you know seek advice because at the end of the day it is one of the most easily detective detectable and treatable cancers with a high, high, high risk of success, but that's only if you catch it early. 
Right. It's not an aggressive cancer, but if you know, you have to catch it early and, you know, if you just let it go and you don't pay attention, you know, bad things can happen. And even with a a erectile dysfunction, it's very common, you know, it starts a lot of times with men in in their age 39 and then as they get older, you know, there are so many things out there nowadays in the medical field that can help men that go through these changes, you know, and it's, you know, not to feel embarrassed and, 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 you know, it's just talk to your doctor and not to just, you know, they have so many products on the internet, you know, don't just run and grab a product because sometimes if you have too high of certain levels, you could instigate cancer. So you really want to be what you take, you know, it's better to see a doctor and talk to a doctor and, you know, or even a functional medicine doctor or a primary doctor and find out what your options are instead of just going and and grabbing something and playing around with your hormones. Because our hormones, our whole body is run by hormones. And if you elevate certain hormones, it could change everything from, you know, from your your cells, you know, we all have cancerous cells and, you know, they're, you know, sometimes they're just, they're not activated. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when you take hormones and you're not being monitored and you're not, you're just doing it because it, it sounds good or you see a commercial or info commercial and you start playing around, lots of things can happen. It can throw off the entire body. And, it, you know, some of these, you know, products can actually instigate cancer also if the hormones, you know, certain hormones get too elevated as well. So it's always good to, you know, you know, to, to you know, keep up on these things as well. And I, I, Absolutely, you know, yeah. I, I'd love for you to tell people about the services that you have. Could you have some really great services on your website and things that you do with your clients? So tell us a little about your services. Yeah. So at the moment, it's actually a really good timing, actually, to today's show, really, because I've just been designing a brand new application. And when I say designing, um, I'm not like a designer in the sense of okay, cryptic programs like that, software designing, you know. So I'm just developing that at the moment. So that's in its beta test at the moment. So I'm really, really excited about that. So that's a brand new application that's got a huge range of um, resources. It hasn't got a huge range of resources yet, so like, actually. It's got several resources at the moment. Um, but they they offer a variety of needs. So that starts right from our ever more popular chair program exercise regener- rejuvenation. I remember when we first started that, that was just for a client who had uh, angular spondylitis, a degenerative back condition. Um, and now about 8% of our clients use some form of chair exercise, whether they are wheelchair bound, um have excessive weight um or just haven't trained for it ever that's right. really a, a brand new resource really excited about that um we have our flagship rejuvenation program that's over 12 weeks that's where you get the, like the full caboodle really around the neuro neurology um aspects of positive psychology the full strength and techniques and the flexibilities from the variety of programs um, and that's the one that's funny you were talking about the the, the, the the possible medication stuff or dysfunction um you find a good percentage of our clients who go through that program whether they're brave enough or not to admit it do report benefits in that particular area as well you know now whether that's the kind of a blood flow thing whether that's just a bit more confidence I haven't I don't know deep enough why that is just happy to hear it anyway always yeah. nice to see the smile on their face um and then, like I'd already mentioned, you've got a huge range of free resources. Uh, the most recent on the circadian rhythm and the five best tips that how you can improve that. Um, we have uh, my most recent ebook was the most complex organ in the world and how you can change it. Um, like I mentioned, people just don't know what their brain is and how it works and what's good and what's bad and what parts they can change. Um, right. We go a lot into that, particularly around the changes around middle age, some of the deteriorating factors. But again, comparing that with some of the more plasticity, increase um, not white matter, um, but increased uh, neural neurostatic connections that you can have. Um, and oh, it's probably a bit old now, so I won't bother that that last one there. Um, and just a huge range of free resources. I think at the last count, we had something like 70 free resources. 
Wow. And the majority of those you don't even need to sign up to. So we want people to sign up to. We want you to know what's going on. We want you to get involved in on a deeper level. But we also expect accept that there's a percentage of people just need a little bit of help, a little bit of support, a little bit of advice. And that's we're, we're absolutely happy with that as well. I love it. And you do you do um, one on one coaching or group coaching sessions with people? Yes, absolutely. So the majority of it is one on one. But again, it's another aspect that I probably didn't necessarily see, see coming because it's, there is a community aspect. If you join the, the, the TRM program, that's how you want to be fair. Um, and it was kind of a bonus, really, you know, if people wanted to join that community thing, because I thought from a community aspect, that's what's in modern times. But I thought from a community perspective, you're probably talking more face to face is the real benefit. Mm -hmm. But that's where evidence, you know, you have to be proven. And the clients absolutely love it. You know, and sometimes it's quite focused on the training and what they've done and they share evidence. Because even mm -hmm. though it's the same program, there will be different aspects that each client does. So then yes. they learn lots of different things off each other which is absolutely fine. And then it just became a bit of a talk shop as well in the sense of guys just ended up just chatting about different things and different subjects. It's sort of, you know, sort of started to grow sort of um, organically, really. So fundamentally one-to-one, -one, but yeah, there's absolutely a group site, um, aspect of that, which we do on a monthly basis. I love it. Now, if they wanted to get in touch with you and maybe schedule a one on one or, you know, get together to do a group coaching session where you have it on a monthly basis, how can they do that? Well, I think the best, the, the easiest way would be through my website because that's got all my social media attached to that and everything. So that's at Dave Ferguson, um, Dave Ferguson coach dot com. And that's where you'll get all the free resources as well. And if you want a longer chat about any of your, needs or challenges to see if I could support with them, then you could just book a free rejuvenation call. And that's it's all really simple there, all in the one place. You could find that um, there. And what I would also like to add for your particular listeners, um, as I said, I always like, you know, particularly with the international order, so I like to share something like a little extra. I would offer, I'm going to offer three places on my new beta application there's only 15 available in total and i'm going to offer three to your listeners uh stacy today so first come first serve basis three people who are want to be involved with the new beta tests on my new application then i'm happy to allocate them three spots oh wonderful wonderful you're, you're welcome this has been amazing. I, I really appreciate you. And, you know, we'll put that information for the beta test in the, uh, in the uh, description is, and I, I, it, should they just contact you specifically or go on your website and contact you and ask if they could be a part of it? Yeah. They just mentioned you, the advisor or Stacey. Yeah. And then I'll know. Yeah. And absolutely we can go from there. But same thing. If you go to the same, uh, day folks at coach.com, go through there. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Dave. I, I I think, you know, what you're doing is amazing because I think it's well needed. You know, you hear a lot of stuff now about middle-aged women, but you don't really hear people talking about middle-aged men as much as they should. And they go through a lot, you know, and it's kind of brushed off in our society. It's not, there's not a lot out there that it, that is offered. So I think what you're doing is amazing. I think it's very beneficial. I think, you know, there is a, a strong need in what you're doing, especially in the United States, because it's just not, it's, you don't see a lot of information. You see bits and pieces. And, and so I really think that, you know, this is you know, something that could be really well received and, and not just Ireland, but in America and many other, you know, places globally, because it's just not talked about enough and it should be talked about and using martial arts as a way of rejuvenating your, rejuvenating your mind, your body, your spirit, and really, you know, giving you a whole new perspective on life, I think is wonderful. And, and the different programs that you have that could help in those areas are, are tremendous. Tremendous. And I just like to thank you for what you're doing. And thank you so much for coming on the show and providing all this great information. I really appreciate you and, and thank you so much for what you're doing. I oh, appreciate it. Thanks for your kind words, Stacey. Been a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. And you have a great day. Will do. Take care. Take care.